Drew, I know you got certain things to do. Let's go. I got a right. bit. Let's get this thing on the road. All right. Go to <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
So when I was 16 years old, I went to the only school that there was at the time, the Correll School of Real Estate, got my license, and uh, that put me in a position to start, as we say, working the crowd at an auction, getting bids, and, and of course, doing that with my family. I had uh, two brothers and a sister and a mother and dad, and we all did this together. So long and short of it is I, I was able to do that. Uh, uh, graduated from the University of Georgia with a degree in real estate. And as good as that was, it didn't teach me much when it comes <laughs> to the auction business when it, uh, at the stage it was in at that time, I went and was privileged to be involved with the Georgia Auctioneers Association, which was my first real education working with other auctioneers that had been prominent in the business all their uh, lives. And if you think about it, we talked about real estate, estates, and antiques, and that sort of thing. But if you look at cattle, automobiles, antique automobiles, all the things that sell uh, on the market at auction back then and now even more today. And uh, it's just been a fabulous thing to watch. So uh, now my, in this position, I've had an opportunity to grow in my observation of the real estate business, what's going on in uh, particularly the Atlanta market, but all across the state. You got to know people all across the state uh, because there's a very strong working together aspect to the sale of real estate when you're representing your client uh, in a good way. Uh, you work together, in other words. Somebody lists, somebody sells, and then you work with an attorney to close it. And the multi-list facet of real estate now is so vital to selling property uh, for, to, so that you're representing your client in the best way possible. And it's a unique situation to have such a friend with a background in auctions to be the Georgia Real Estate Commission, right? Has that ever happened before? Uh, not to my knowledge. Now, uh, I belong to a group called Arello, which is the Association of Real Estate License Law Officials. Uh, my deputy commissioner, Craig Coffey, has been the president of that group. It's a very large national group, uh, members from Hawaii to Canada to the uh, West Indies. I mean, this is a multi uh, membered group and we learn in Georgia what's going on in other states by being involved in this group and it's much like the Georgia Association of Realtors or the National Association of Realtors uh, but then that flips into uh, the uh, real estate license law business and so we know what's going on in other states we can keep up with that as a matter of fact, uh, at, here in Georgia, I have met with uh, Vaughn Pope, the Alabama uh, real estate commissioner. And when COVID hit, uh, he revolutionized what we do by turning his conference room into a studio so that through the COVID uh, outbreak, they could meet in a Zoom fashion, their commission could. Vaughn started Coffee with the Commission so that licensees could meet with him through a Zoom call that he handled a week before each meeting, which is typically held every month in most states. Just incredible what's happening in the real estate business, license law business as a result of that, and what uh, the different kinds of uh, sales, as we've talked, what computers done, what drones have done, uh, uh, what multi-list has done, what internet bidding has done now in the auction business particularly. I like to say, I mean, I started here, first thing I started hearing four years ago, was 
put a piece of property on the market, and the way the market's been, you've got an auction going on with multiple offers. All those offers have to be presented, put into contract, presented. Basically, they've been having auctions. Right. That's right. And so uh, that, that was the first thing that I thought about was how much that sounds like an auction. Uh, and as it's turned out, a lot has been learned through all that. And you starting out um, so long in the auction business and now being, you know, on the other side mm -hmm. where the uh, agents are, have you seen the relationships? I know for a time, you know, a lot of real estate agents, you know, the auctions were a distress thing. They, you know, why would I send property to an auction and not just sell it myself? Have you seen, now that you're dealing with uh, the agents more, any more uh, working together? Or where do you see that? Well, what I have experienced uh, that I've really enjoyed experiencing is uh, there are, it's either 48, 49, or 50 real estate boards in the state. Uh, the further south you go, uh, the smaller the counties. So you have multiple counties in each board, like up in Rome, Calhoun, Dalton, you might have one board for each one of those communities because they're larger. In Atlanta, uh, again, everything's broken down fine. So it, it's interesting how it's all organized, but what I have seen and experienced is how sophisticated the sale of real estate, either privately we call it, or at auction publicly, has become and how important it is to serve your client the best way possible, which is what we're all in it for, that and making a living. But if that comes, the making a living, if you serve your client well. So the more we work together, the more we learn through educating ourselves, uh, the better job we're going to do for our client and eventually the better our business is going to be, I think. I agree. That's, uh, yeah, you know, we've gotten to work with agents, and they just didn't know. <laughs> you know, you don't know till you know. Right, exactly. And, um, and let, me, let me throw this in, Drew. It's so important. The way we're organized and from the beginning, from the first real estate law that the state of Georgia had, the organization goes that, each office has a managing broker. So that managing broker is responsible for the other sale, uh, either associate brokers or salesmen in the office. That managing broker has to be in charge, has to know what the rules are, has to make sure that their personnel know what the rules are. And then it's the real estate commission's job to hold that managing broker accountable. That's another part of our job that comes in when uh, there is a dispute. It would surprise you how just as many disputes are between brokers and salesmen as there are between uh, people that are buying and selling real estate against a broker or a seller. So in other words, you've got, uh, we have to be involved in disputes between offices, inner offices, and uh, uh, one broker against another sometimes. Now, uh, I think we do a real good job with that. I think a lot of that uh, is once tempers have calmed, and uh, the, everybody gets their story out as to what's happened, then we have a very good uh, procedure for handling that. And most of the time, uh, things can be mediated pretty well. That's our goal. In the meantime, while that's happening, education continues. And the more education we can get out there, the more opportunity we've got to teach. 
and, and keep that sort of thing from happening within an office or between a broker and a salesman. Well, and I think you said that transactions with real estate has gotten so much more sophisticated. And, you know, if you're going to be buying or selling real estate, you need a professional on your side. And that's why we all go through a lot of education. We get a lot of accreditations because our clients do need a professional to help them with that sophistication. Exactly. exactly. And then you made some, some real good points there about the education. But, you know, you're really in a unique position with your auction background and now being uh, at, the, at, at the point person for the, uh, the legal side of the, of the real estate profession. Uh, over the years, you've seen how things have evolved, uh, your longevity and, and, and being on both sides of that equation. Used to, uh, everybody thought we were in competition with one another. Right. But, That's right. but these days, as, as education and as uh, people as, have opened their, their eyes a little bit more to how things can really work well, uh, working together is part of that. And uh, uh, what you said, Scott, was, was real good about uh, professionals. You know, we're not we're not professionals in the private end of things necessarily, and and real estate brokers are not. They don't understand the nuances and the marketing and the differences that that auctioneers bring to the table. But working together, uh, there's a place for it. Uh, it's not saying that we're that we're the end all answer to every property or or every selling situation, but but certainly there are some properties and some selling situations, such as estates and so forth, that lend themselves very well uh, to auctions and, and should be the uh, a very prime consideration in how to best represent that client. Uh, so we see, one of the things I've seen over the years is how much brokers, real estate brokerage and, and auctions uh, have worked, learned how to work together to everybody. Uh, I always enjoy the opportunity that uh, when a family gets to a point, owns something very valuable in the way of real estate. And for various reasons, they're not able to decide how piece of property should either be divided or sold or marketed uh, and it can become so complicated if dealing with the deal right now where a conservator a, a member of the court is involved in a situation uh, the attorneys as good a job as they do they're not typically trained in selling marketing and selling real estate uh, and there are times when either through a private sale or an auction sale scenario, either one of those can work. Uh, of course, I grew up with the auction scenario more than the, the private sale for this. But when family members have the right to uh, bid on property that's been divided, and offered in uh, fair ways so that everybody has a chance at the property. And uh, sometimes that might be emotional, but that's where a professional, a real estate professional, uh, comes in to being. The training and the experience is so valuable. Uh, I, I met a lady that was the owner of one of the largest real estate companies in Atlanta. And her family, uh, as, as uh, hard as they tried, could not come up with the proper solution. And to, to, to mediate the sale of that property, it just would not fall into place. And the Compton Auction Company became involved. And, uh, uh, she, when she realized who I was and what I had been involved in before I took this job, and she had a chance to explain to me what this had, this procedure and the way it turned out had uh, been.
benefited her family and kept a very difficult situation uh, uh, where it needed to be rather than where it might have been headed. It was very satisfactory to me to, to hear that story. And, uh, and, you know, people need to understand what other realtors, not necessarily realtors, uh, about half of our licensees, we've estimated, are, are actually realtors, part of the Georgia Association of Realtors or the National Association of Realtors or both. Uh, the others don't have to be part of that organization. They can be licensees, not saying which one is the best, it's your option, but uh, like you're saying, Scott, that the education is what is so important, and if people will take an opportunity just through the continuing education that the Real Estate Commission uh, has and, and mandates, uh, and that is a mandated situation now, you, every four years you have to have so much education in the real estate business, unless you're what we call grandfathered. That means older than some of us. <laughs> and we we got our license and I'm looking I'm pointing back at me. Like we've said before. But not quite as early as you <laughs> Well, you know, we're missing something if we're not availing ourselves of those opportunities. You're right. And it's it's significant. Um, the cost, the time to be involved in this continuing education, you know, every year. Uh, people who aren't real estate agents don't realize. I mean, it's not easy and it's not inexpensive. And so um, it keeps us qualified. It keeps us up on what's happening. Um, it's, it keeps us up being able to serve our client the best way possible. About the first call I got sitting in the office where I now sit was down. Mr. Dempsey, are you the new commissioner? <laughs> yes, sir. I said, well, I've been looking forward to talking to you about all this continuing education. I've been doing this for 25 years. I know all there is to know about the real estate business, and I don't need to know anymore. I want that y'all to do away with that. And I said, to myself, I said to Ken, the fellow, <laughs> You don't know everything there is to know, and there's a lot to learn. And uh, uh, I have done my best to, to take that as a challenge, too. And the first two years, I went to every one of these real estate boards in the state, met everybody that I could, and our commission now, and I'm so proud of them, reaches out to, uh, we at this last Torello meeting two weeks ago, all but uh, one of those commissioners out of six was in Nashville, Tennessee at that meeting, learning themselves and reaching out to uh, uh, others. Uh, last, uh, last week, we had uh, a top government official speaking in Rome, Georgia, which is where I'm from. Five of our six commissioners were there, and I had an opportunity to tell my home real estate board, look, uh, this commission is here, they've come from a long way, and they want to reach out to you. So that's kind of what we're trying to do. Instead of being some kind of fearsome group that wants to uh, manage people's lives, it's, it's, it's a help. We're offering help. That's great. Lynn, you've done a great job in your, in your current role as a real estate commissioner for our fine state. Um, but I'd like to, uh, if you would just take some liberties. Uh, what I really want to hear are some war stories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like you're a little bit nitty gritty. What uh, What comes to your mind as uh, as one of your most memorable or, or maybe uh, uh, most unusual auction experiences over your long, fast career in the auction profession? Um, Not to put you on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that you can share publicly. <laughs> we had a sale up in Tennessee, top of the mountain. And it was one of the most beautiful pieces of property you've ever seen. And we had three sisters that owned it. And we 
really worked hard. It's a long way over from East Tennessee, where most of the folks there talk about instead of y'all, like we say, they say units. <laughs> and so it's kind of a whole different part of the world over there. Good people. I got to tell you, these are good people. But they're hard to understand sometimes. And they're pretty set and sought in their ways, as they say. It's called hillbilly. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> we had uh, about five to ten minutes to go before that sale was to start. We were in a tent overlooking some of the prettiest country you've ever seen. Five to ten minutes after the sale was supposed to start, that tent was full. Most of it, most of those people were there just to see what was going to happen to this family <laughs> when this sale started. <laughs> it's one of those estate situations I was talking about. Well, these girls uh, had been through a lot trying to get to that point to make the decision to sell the property. They, made, they had been to decide who was going to sell it. Once they decided that we were the company to handle that sale, uh, they had to start working together again because they had not been working together so much. And y'all, this fella came up there. And he had one thing in mind, and that was to buy that property. He was a veteran, a Vietnam veteran. And he had in his mind to buy that property so that he could establish trails and handicapped veterans could get into uh, uh, motorized vehicles, what we uh, call them. Uh, Scooters, like an ATV or ATVs, something. ATVs, oh, yeah. ATVs, and enjoy that property. That's what, and he didn't care what it cost him. And we had an amazing sale just because of the motivation of that fellow. All three of those girls were married. And the husbands thought they knew more than they did. So when we came to tell them how much this property had brought, more than they were expecting, those husbands, I'm making this too long, I know, but those husbands had decided that's not enough. Never is. <laughs> <laughs> Never is, that's right. So they started working their way into the conversation about making a decision to sell this property. And those girls came together. They got on the same team, and they made those husbands understand what their part in that discussion was going to be. They went around to the other side of the truck and left those old boys standing there. <laughs> <laughs> in any case, it was a great sale, great experience. Oh. Everybody came together, and, and, and uh, the most beautiful part of it was what this fellow bought this property mm. to do. He was so excited by the time 30 days later we had a closing. That's another thing about an auction, too. You're typically getting, uh, and it, it's just because it's uh, it, there's nothing in writing about it, no rules about it, that would be illegal. But typically with an auction, there is a larger down payment than with uh, a private sale. And that's because I think you've got a, a quick closing anticipated and you, you want to be sure you've got good hard money and somebody that's been committed to the sale. So... Uh, uh, that that works well with an auction, and it's something uh, that's a little different in the way you look at a sale by auction. That's right. I tell a lot of people, you don't sell at auction to capitalize your gain. You sell at auction to minimize your losses. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good point. And time and energy. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. Do you see any trends or, you know, being in your position, do you see the market, you know, we're uh, September of 2022 and it's been just on fire for so long. Are you seeing it checked back and what do you see happening? Well, what's a little different than has been, there's a shortage of housing. There is no doubt about that. So many people, we're averaging a thousand 
new licenses in the state of Georgia alone. Still, and that might have dropped back a little. What's happened typically is people from other parts of the country have been drawn to Georgia for whatever reason, and the Southeast for whatever reason. I don't, I don't think anybody could hardly argue that way. We're a huge agricultural state. We're becoming even more of a manufacturing state. And look at the jobs that uh, I heard the governor say in the last couple of weeks that uh, just the two anticipated car plants that are under uh, electric vehicle plants that are under, under I mean, they're all signed deals. Uh, the employment that is coming into this state is just staggering, more so than he could even anticipate. Uh, so, with with all that going on, um, and the, the lack of available housing, you know, as much as that's, it's creating a demand that even rising interest rates has not slowed up very much. I, I was expecting, when we began to see Number one, inflation, which we are experiencing now, and uh, higher interest rates. That's what I was raised on in the last 40 years. Things about to change most likely or possibly. It's not slowing a whole lot up. Now, what's happened is also different in Georgia. We're experiencing this whole state. Uh, with this growth. It's just not the metro area. So you've got the mountains that are uh, drawing so many people in Georgia to them now. Blue Ridge, LJ, uh, you've got avenues. The Zell Miller Parkway is so prominent up there. You've got education. You've got North Georgia uh, uh, College up there in uh, Dahlonega. Uh, so you've got education. You've got a great lakes, you've got rivers, uh, North Georgia is just so prominent up there. You go to Augusta, you get the Masters, what do you say? You've got uh, the hospital where people are learning to be doctors around the world. Um, you go to the beach, and then you got agriculture around the rest. One thing I don't want to leave out with a question like that is Georgia sports. Between Savannah and Brunswick, I'm trying to tell everybody everywhere I go, not only do we have ports that other people are having to anchor their ships out there in the ocean, we're bringing them in because we can then put them on uh, rail, rail and ship them. All, if you, once you get to Chattanooga, if you can get to Chattanooga or some... Uh, then you've got interstates going all, all, all over the country. We've got the darndest uh, supply chain system set up with I-16. You've got 27 on the west side of the state. Uh, it's, it, then you've got agriculture in the middle. They've developed these inland ports, inland like ports. up in Chatsworth, and they're about to build one in Gainesville, and so they they train it up to those inland ports. And another one in Chatsworth. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's amazing. So. Uh, and those people weren't really looking forward to that till they saw what it did with the economy up there. Mm -hmm. And now they're excited about that. Uh, so what that's where that sets us up for uh, agriculture is pretty amazing. And I'm, I'm just trying to go around the state and, and making sure that people have an understanding. I'm used to selling. That's what I did all 40 years in, in my career. And so I enjoy that part of it and let people know uh, how blessed we are as a state to, uh, you know, leaders. It's, it comes from leadership. A lot of this comes from leadership. Number one state of doing business in the country for what? Eight five years. Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. Number one state. That's yeah. right. Yeah. In the whole country. Yeah. That's exactly. Well, Lynn, 
I sure appreciate you coming by today. Are we through? I was just well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Well, yeah. um, we you. sure Thank appreciate you. you. Is there, can the people get in touch with you at your office, or what's a way to Here's what I do when I ask that question. I like to give myself up because I am, I want to be available. And uh, sometimes when you've got eight folks answering the phone and they can't, they can't keep up because of the, uh, the activity that we've got coming in to, to the commission. Uh, I like to, to, my cell phone number is 706-766-6647. Uh, now, not only am I the commissioner for uh, real estate, I'm also the commissioner for the appraiser board. We have a five-member uh, appraiser board and a six-member real estate commission. So uh, appraisals are so critical to especially private sales, and we're, we're hurting for appraisers in this state right now. And uh, back in the tough days of 8, 9, and 10, 2008, 9, and 10, uh, a lot of appraisers who had known one market all of a sudden were dealing with another. And it hurt to see what happened when values fell the way they did at that point. And it just, it, when I say it hurt, it hurt that physically just could not go back to work. Hurt them that bad. Uh, it wasn't their fault, but it still the market changed so dramatically back then. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. I know real estate has traditionally been a great investment, along with many others. Uh, you just, uh, I think, the key to doing well in, in real estate investment is knowing who you're dealing with and how you're doing. And that means a well trained. That's what we've been talking about most of the year. Well, Lynn, thank you again. And thank you all for joining us. And um, check us out next week. Make sure hit subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. Thank you. Thank you.